Hi, and welcome to Sailing Britain. I'm Simon, and this is Kim. And our daughter, but she's somewhere around here. We help people transition into the full-time sailing lifestyle. We do this through our website, our sailing publications, YouTube videos, coaching calls, and our Britican experience, where we take guests out for a week or longer to provide a try-before-you-buy lifestyle experience. We do how-to videos, we showcase various sailing destinations, and we do our best to keep a running vlog about our adventures. In our last vlog, we went from Grenada to St. Lucia, stopping in Kariakou for a couple of weeks. Our big issue was an engine problem. We were supposed to get to St. Martin, but diverted to St. Lucia to fix a leaking engine water pump. If you missed that video, check that out and see what it's like to sail in at night and how and why we decided to divert and what happened approaching a country without the right COVID protocol. In this video, we leave St. Lucia and head to St. Martin. Find out if our repairs worked or not. Ooh. So it's all go today. This is what it looks like after the leak. We'll get that all cleaned up once everything is done. Uh, on Wednesday, and he's gonna start taking this off because the leak is right in there in our gasket. See this hole here? If it leaks from there, you need a whole new unit because that means the seal's gone on it. Like I told you, it's all go today. The sail's coming off because the leech line, this line that goes through the back here, has snapped. So what happens at high winds, it just vibrates because you can't get any tension on it. It's okay for light winds a little bit, but we can't have any high winds because it will just vibrate and totally destroy the back of the sail. So, everything's down. Hopefully we'll get it back today. So we're just getting the header tank off. Oh God. Is it bad? Yeah. I thought it was that hole there, but it's this hole here. Okay, well what I can do, Yeah. I will take it to my shop. Alwyn explained that we needed a whole new water pump. After making several phone calls, I determined that we weren't going to get one in time. Alwyn said that we could bung up the hole to create a temporary fix. In the meantime, I ordered the pump to be sent to St. Martin, so it would be there when we arrived. So that's where we bunged it up. It's just a temporary fix until we get the new one, and it will give us some time just to get to St. Martin. It's looking good with the weather, so we should be just using the engine as we pick the anchor up and go out to sea, get the sails up. Once the sails are up, we should sail all the way to St. Martin, and then coming into the anchorage, we'll drop the sails, put the motor on and anchor, and then hopefully that'll be it. While Simon and Alwyn were putting the engine back together, the guys from the sail loft came back with our repaired sail and put it back on for us. It takes Simon and I a day to get our sail off or on, so having the guys help out made the job so much quicker. And here's Simon explaining a little bit more about how the leech line works. Okay, so this is the leech line. This is the very top of the sail. And it, this comes up over and goes down the back of the sail. This is the front of the sail because this is the attachment which attached to the mast. And what happens is you pull it tight so it stops this vibrating and it holds it because otherwise this is just going to flap like that and it's just going to wear it all thin. So it was yellow line, this still is. So what he's done is it snapped apparently it snapped around here and so he's attached it further down in here and down here because we didn't want a knot or a, the, the, the repair to be here because that will wear it away so it's called the two-in-one leech line it's the same line which does two things otherwise you have one at the top here that goes down the front of the sail and one that goes down the back of the sail and it wasn't just the guys doing all the work on the boat. So Sienna's doing some polishing. 
she's doing a boat chores before she can watch what? Screen? Yay! What were you doing, Kim? I'm um, working on the website. Yay! It's uh, just gone 10.30, just gone 10.30. Engine's now running the cells back on. Hey. With all our repairs done, all that was left to do was go to the beach for a swim, get our laundry done, fill up the boat with water, and clean up the boat a bit. I even managed to make a big batch of breakfast burritos to eat and freeze. Every couple weeks, I make a big batch of breakfast burritos and I freeze them up in the freezer. Um, it takes me the same amount to make just a normal breakfast, but then I've got you know quite a few meals lined up or breakfast, so. And I put them in the freezer and when I want them, I just pull them out and microwave them. So it's a really good thing to make a big batch of and just freeze. And Simon created a special math assignment for Sienna. I just finished with this, which took a while. I had to write all of those. All right, good. So what are we doing next? You want to do maths with me? Uh, yes. Okay. All right, just throw the pencil on the floor. Sienna's doing schooling today and we're going to do a maths problem. And what we're going to do is work out how long it's going to take us to go from here in St. Lucia up to here in St. Martin at different speeds. So like at 5 knots, 6 knots, 7 knots and 8 knots. So we're going to find out how far it is and then we have to find out how long it's going to take us. I've asked Sienna to uh, plot us a route from St. Lucia to St. Martin. So I'm going to see how she does. Yes, what I wanted to do was do a bit of maths on, on timings and how long it would take to get from St. Lucia to St. Martin at, at four knots, five knots, six knots, seven knots and eight knots. And then we worked out on a guess to see who would be the closest. And uh, who was the closest? Sienna. And what was it? It was uh, 7.1 knots and she guessed seven knots. Cool. Good well job, done, Sienna. Sienna. <laughs> Once all our jobs were done, we filled up with duty-free fuel and headed out to an anchorage and to wait there until 5 p.m. to leave to St. Martin. Here's our passage plan. Okay, so here we are in St. Lucia and then we're going to go up on the outside of Martinique, Dominica and Guadeloupe. And then we're going to go in between Antigua and Montserrat. Montserrat has got an active volcano so sometimes there's a dust cloud. And then we turn and then go past St. Kitts and Nevis, Eustatia, Sabre, and, and St. Bart's all the way into Simpson Bay on the Dutch side. And that's going to take about 36 to 40 hours. Goodbye, Rodney Bay. Goodbye, St. Lucia. We're 12 hours in, we've done 80 miles, 83 miles in the first 12 hours, which is pretty good going. Um, as you can probably hear the engines on now, the wind has just died, but we are in the shadow of Dominica, which is uh, just over there. Checked the engine and we did have a bit of a leak. I was like, oh, no, but it was just, we put the new header tank on and for some reason it didn't fit very well it was leaking out of the top there so i just put some white uh, tape on it and um plumber's tape and um it's working a treat now so that's good last night i heard this tunk tunk and i'm getting the torch out having a look see if anything snapped or anything no it was two flying fish they must have hit this where are they are they here yeah they're there one there Oh yeah. And one further up. Yeah, I see him. I'm going to get him off now. Because uh, they'll get smelly. Yeah, don't want that. Right on the west side of Dominica right now. And uh, we're motoring because there's very, very little wind right now. Hopefully once we get past Dominica we'll get some more wind. I'm just going to check the engine and I'm going to go to bed. Alright? Alright, sweet James. Alright, thank you. Having my breakfast burrito. Got sausage, tomatoes, cheese, egg in there, and some salsa on the side. 
The early morning brought some beautiful cloud formations. We saw quite a bit of squall activity all around us, but we didn't have any issues. We just got some wind, so I pulled out the headsail and turned off the engine. And it's just me up here. And it's just beautiful. Watching the sun come up. I've got one tanker that's passing me over there. There is a sailboat way out there. Um, I can see like a little pinprick. Otherwise, that's it. How did you sleep? Sleepily. Sleepily? Sleepily. You did pretty good, didn't you? Yeah. It's been quite a calm night. It's not even nine o'clock in the morning and I'm having chicken with rice and I made this um really good kind of creamy Parmesan sauce. It's got mushrooms in it. It's so good. Not what you normally have for breakfast. Really good. But it's so good. It sounds really good. I'm really enjoying it. So we no. got, oh, it was 10.1 I saw. It started coming down. Not bad though. It is a bit, a bit brisk out though. So that there is quite a loop, the end of it. So we're in open ocean now. on that big scale. So he just loosened things up, he's pulling it back in. Yeah, it's seas curled in. Big as well. Yeah, the seas are, are quite large. So and beautiful. We are flying. We're going very, very fast. We're actually doing, there you go. 9.2? 9 point, we're, we're going between 8.8 eight and 9.3. Um, it's our favorite point of sail. It's on the beam, which is right on the side of the boat. And she just loves it. And we've got two reefs in, the reef in the main, a reef in the head sail, head sail, and we're still flying along. And just over there, It'd be on the other side is Montserrat and over here is Antigua and I was expecting to hit Antigua about 10 11 o'clock at night and we're actually gonna hit it at five at five whoops sorry the wave big wave um, so we're just absolutely flying along the only problem with that is that we're gonna get if we keep going at this pace we're gonna get in, in to the anchorage at dark which we don't really want to do We've never anchored in this bay, but um, we know that it's a big, easy bay to anchor in. So we're just going to go in nice and slow and take our time. And if it's only like an hour away from being light, we'll just slow right up and just go in. At first light, drop the hook and have a little snooze and then go in and book ourselves in. We just put in a sausage pasta bake. Mmm, yummy! Yeah, we just I'm got. Drenched. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it, I don't know if you can see that, but it, it's all soaking wet. We got a huge wave. Huge hit. wave. Even I got wet, and I'm stuck behind there. <laughs> How is it? Yeah. You like enjoying it, Sienna? We got Montserrat below, uh, in the background there. Yeah, and that's the active volcano. Yeah. Right there. That's the that volcano, you can kind of see the smoke coming off of it. Which is kind of cool. Not every day you sail past an active volcano, is no. it? No, with great food. Yeah. <laughs> it's six o'clock in the morning, uh, day two, is it day three? It's after our second night anyway. So we set off at uh, 5 p.m. And uh, then, so we're now here at 6 a.m. 600 hours and we're an hour away from St. Martin which is just over there under the clouds um, 
the wind is directly behind us so drop the sails and we're just motoring in now and uh, a little tired a little hungry but glad that we made it had a brilliant sail yesterday afternoon and yesterday evening we were averaging high eights to low nines it was fantastic she's a little rocket ship when she wants to be it's great coming into Simpson Bay was easy we dropped the hook just outside the area where we needed to book into customs and immigration I packed the sail away and then before taking a quick nap we had a bite to it so I like to finish when we do long passages or overnights I like to finish with um, English bacon sandwich but we don't have any English bacon so we have English breakfast sausages with HP sauce. Mm. As soon as we arrived in St. Martin, we quickly got a few jobs done, including getting a new anchor chain, having a new Raymarine navigation system installed, putting in our new water pump on the engine. Cheers! And why are you guys happy? Because we got beer. The motor works. <laughs> <laughs> Repairing a gasket on the engine, getting new crew covers, enjoying fun times with all the kid boats here in St. Martin, and being able to finally take out guests for our Britican experience. During our Britican experience, we show people what the sailing life is like. Our guests get to see what the sailing conditions are like, discover what living on a sailboat actually requires, how to plan passages, the procedures for mooring balls and anchoring, meeting other live aboard cruisers, and just enjoying the lifestyle. If you want to find out what this lifestyle is all about, come join us on Britikin. You can find out more information on our Britikin experience page here or find it in the link below. Please like our videos and subscribe. Thank you and Bye. goodbye.